was the clarion call of Swami Vivekananda, the illustrious patriot saint who preached that service of man is true worship of God. In December 1892, Swami Vivekananda, as a wandering monk, visited Kanyakumari, the southernmost tip of the Indian mainland at the confluence of the Bay of Bengal, the Arabian Sea, and the Indian Ocean. He visited the ancient temple on the shore which is dedicated to Devi Kanyakumari, one of the incarnations of Goddess Parvati. On Vijay Dashmi day every year, the deity is taken out in procession with great pomp. From the sandy beach on the eastern coastline, Swami Vivekananda swam in the shark infested mid sea for over a distance of 500 yards to the rock which is known from ancient times as Sripa the Parai. During the three days and three nights of meditation on the hallowed rock, he discovered the mission of his life and decided to give to the world the message of Sanatana Dharma, the universal religion. It was here that the simple monk was transformed into a great reformer, great organizer, and a great master builder of the nation. To perpetuate the memory of this great event, Swami Vivekananda Centenary Celebrations Committee, formed in 1962, resolved to erect a suitable memorial on the rock. After some preliminary survey on the rock, several memorial plans were proposed and that of Sapati S.K. Achari, the renowned architect and engineer of the traditional school was approved. From all over the country, donations, more than a crore of rupees were collected, about 75% of them coming from the common mass of people, contributing small amounts. A miniature model of the main edifice made in sandalwood was utilized to explain to the visitors the details of the proposed memorial. As the memorial site was in Midsay, it was decided to construct the memorial in granite. To determine the strength of the inner core of the rock, a test bore 60 feet deep was made and the results were found satisfactory. Hundreds of artisans, workers and laborers coming from several parts of Tamil Nadu were provided accommodation at Madhavapuram a mile away. Bluish granite stones which were used in construction below the beam level were obtained from a quarry 70 miles away while red granite stone which were used for the superstructure were procured from a quarry 100 miles away. Twenty-ton monolithic stones were cut from the quarry for the four ornamental pillars. They were chiseled into shape at the quarry itself. Thus reduced in weight to 14 tons, they were transported to the stone dressing yards on the shore by special trucks. The culverts en route had to be strengthened by suitable props to ensure safe passage. Relief carving, dressing of stones and polishing them manually were executed under the expert guidance of Sapati S.K. Achari, 
the chief architect and engineer in charge of the entire construction. An approach route to the shore was formed and a breakwater wall constructed by the state PWD by dumping about 5,000 truckloads of boulders. This was their contribution to the memorial project. At the initial stage, a temporary landing platform made of wood was put up at the foot of the rock and a ferry service consisting of small rowing boats was used to transport men and materials from the shore to the rock. The first mechanized vessel, a tugboat, was pressed into service in 1967. It was named Augustia. The dressed stones were transported to the memorial site in pontoons tugged by mechanized boats or in barges. After the preliminary work of blasting stones at the lower level of the rock, the foundation stone for Dhyanamandapam was laid on Vijay Dashmi Day in 1967 by Sri Eknath Ranade, the organizing secretary. As their further contribution to the memorial project, the state government through the PWD attempted to construct a jetty platform in the crevice at the foot of the rock by blasting on the water and removing the loose boulders. Two large crevices at the foot of the rock on either side of the main edifice were converted into reservoirs for storing rainwater required for construction work. The 14-ton ornamental pillars were transported to the rock by a special launch, Vijaya. A trolley track was laid in the slope of the rock to haul up heavy materials to the site levels using manually operated winch and wire ropes. Thousand six hundred feet submarine cable was laid in the seabed for supplying electrical power to the rock by the state electricity board. The cables were anchored by suitable concrete blocks to keep them in position. These monolithic 14-ton ornamental pillars were hauled up and placed in position. Other dressed and polished pillars of the main mantapum were also erected. construction of one big and seven small shikarams, including a rectangular one in the front, was taken up when the work up to the terrace level was completed. Huge elephants carved out of monolithic stone were placed in position. Stone by stone and pillar by pillar, the memorial was taking shape. During the different phases of the construction of the memorial, the Maharaja of Nepal, 
ಶ್ರೀ ಭಕ್ತವತ್ಸಲಂ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವೀರೇಶ್ವರಾನಂದ ದ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಆಫ್ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯಾನಂದ ದ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಆಫ್ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಗೋಲ್ವಾಲ್ಕರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ವಿಸಿಟೆಡ್ ದ ಮೆಮೋರಿಯಲ್ The Kalashim on the main Shikharam was installed with due rituals by Sapati S.K. Achari. Two months long inaugural celebrations were organized from September 1970. The consecration of the memorial was performed by Swami Vireshwarananda, the president of Ramakrishna Math and Mission, on the 2nd of September 1970. The traditional ceremonies started in the early hours. Many other spiritual leaders, including Swami Chinmayananda, participated in the ceremonies. Rashtrapati Sri Vivi Giri landed on the rock by a helicopter for the opening of the memorial. was welcomed in the traditional manner with Purna Kumbha. After worshipping Devi Padam, he paid homage to Swami Vivekananda. inside the Sadha Mantapam are embellished with carving representative of our culture. function took place at 10 a.m. on the shore opposite to the memorial and it was presided over by Sri M. Karunanidhi, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. Sri Eknath Vanade in his report said that a part of the dream had been realized. He referred to the further aspiration of the committee to establish a service mission with a significant program of building up a kada of dedicated life workers, a lay order of missionaries. Rashtrapati honored Sapati S.K. Achari, the chief architect, and Sri N.L. Sonavadeka, the sculptor who had prepared the statue. After benediction by Swami Vireshwarananda, Sri Vivi Giri, in his inaugural address said that Swami Vivekananda's contribution was not limited to religious revival and cultural renaissance but also to bring about a salutary change in the attitude and the approach of the people to the social problems. The Prime Minister Srimati Indira Gandhi visited the memorial on the 16th of September 1970. She was welcomed by Swami Ranganathananda, Justice D.N. Sinha, the President of the Committee, 
Sri Eknath Ranade and other committee members. After she had paid homage at the feet of Swami Vivekananda's statue by offering flowers, she was taken around the memorial. Later, she addressed a meeting on the shore. She said that the present-day youth are finding fault with the old values of life, not because the values are wanting, but because we of the old generation have not lived up to those ideals. She concluded that individual salvation could be assured by working for the collective salvation and welfare of one and all. Vice President G.S. Patek participated on the concluding day of the celebration by releasing the commemoration volume on India's contribution to world thought and culture, brought out by the committee to mark the special occasion. Dignitaries from all over the country who visited the memorial during the celebrations and after include the Defence Minister of Norway, C. H. N. Bahuguna, Dr. Karan Singh, and C. T. A. Pai, the Union Ministers, Admiral Krishnan of Indian Navy, Guruji Golwalkar, Srimat Swami Shankaracharya of Kanchi. The message of Swami Vivekananda is service to humanity is service to divinity. Jaya Jaya Paramatman Sansmaramo Vayam Swam Inspired by the above message, the committee resolved on the 12th of January 1972, the birthday of Swami Vivekananda, to establish a service mission under the name of Vivekananda Kendra. The traditional flag, saffron in color and triangular in shape, the age-old symbol of renunciation and service, with the symbol OM inscribed on it, was hoisted by the President, Professor P. Mahadevan, to reach the top of the mast, heralding both the rise of the sun and the emergence of Vivekananda Kendra on that memorable day. <laughs>